Well, that definitely hit. <laughs> Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and I'm back with Matt Easton of Scholar Gladiatoria. Yeah. But importantly, we're actually back at Matt and Lucy Easton's Fight Camp 21, which is a weekend of training for all kinds of martial arts and everything you can ever imagine. But I've got an unboxing video for Matt, and he doesn't know anything about it. Eight months ago, six months ago, uh, Matt made a film, great film on his channel, uh, Scholar Gladiatoria, go check it out about 10 weird weapons from the medieval era. Now there are an awful lot of weird weapons in the medieval era. I thought this is a great opportunity. I can make the stuff, Matt not so good. He can use the stuff, me not so good. So this is just a perfect combination. So you don't know what I'm proposing, Matt. I haven't got a clue, no. I don't know whether it's one of those 10 or whether it's- It is one of those 10. Okay. So here is your unboxing video. Right, okay. Let's see what we got. And the idea is, <laughs> the idea is, if this works out, we're going to run quite a few films. Not that you know that, but if you're happy for this, yeah, where I make well. weird stuff from the medieval era and Matt test it out and then we talk about it. So what right. you got, Matt? I wonder if the viewers have guessed from the shape of this. I don't know. It's a funny one. So, have you guessed? There you go. So it's a, it's a flail. It is a flail. And it's already had my knuckles, I can tell you that. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, my very rough user guide is... Because it's quite end heavy, yeah. your natural thing is that what you do is you put that hand up there to help support the weight. Oh, okay. And then you lift it up, I'm not even gonna do it. No, no, and then no, you lift yeah. your hand up and that happens. So that is my first word of warning. Yeah, so keep your hands down the bottom. Yeah, so these weapons, we know that they were used between the 14th and the 16th centuries. Um, famously by the Hussites, um, but we also see lance connects later with uh, forms of flail and, and um, they're shown in a few of the treatises that we work from in HEMA. Hmm. So uh, Palo Sector Mare is one of the famous ones, 16th century, mid 16th century treaty. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because you want to know how far that yeah, I see, if I had that, I would want put a, a discard on it. Yeah, or, or put a marker, yeah. even just, or even a notch or something. Something. You know, but what I would say is, a lot of using these is about keeping the acceleration and deceleration with them, so they shouldn't come back and hit the shaft right. anyway. So it's just rank amateurs swing, like me, yeah, yeah. When you swing the thing, it should be almost... God, uh, it's nasty, isn't it? It should be almost straight out when it's swinging and then it only, at the end, you decelerate it. Yeah, you sort of no, I can see it, it's stopping. and decelerate, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't be coming and hitting its own shaft because it would damage itself yeah. as well. Yeah, but, it, but again, on the, it's one of those things about weapons now, is that you train with a blunt sword, and you expect your sword to last for three years, and you might do a bit of deburring and stuff. Yeah. If you need to change the shaft on that historically after a battle, so what? Yeah. You know, really, so what? It's just a bit of wood. Yeah. Going back, you're saying that there are treaties about how to use these things because, I, for me, I really struggled to see how you can use it in a measured way. This, for me, almost seems like an all-or-nothing <laughs> weapon. You are fully committing to so, a blow. Yeah, so, I mean, you are, but at the same time, a lot of the principles from other pole weapon use comes into it as well. Um, so uh, they, they'll stand in, in guard positions whereby they will be able to use the rest of the shaft for potentially... Uh, pushing aside or parrying incoming thrust from a spear or something yeah. like that. But equally, if you've hit someone with the weapon, uh, you might then step in close to use the back end yeah. of the weapon as well. So I think sometimes people get so fixated on this bit because that's the novelty. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they forget that this is still this is still a lump of wood. Very and, good. You know, even if you held it backwards, you could still hit someone with the back, yeah. with the back end of it somehow. But. But yeah, principally... I think that that's a really good point, actually, <laughs> is that it is a weapon in its own right with a bit of extra yeah. nastiness on the yeah. end. It's an unusual tool, uh, but the thing is, we've also got to remember these fencing treatises are not necessarily showing typical use of a weapon. Yeah. They're showing one-on-one, -on -one, the gentry, yeah. who are like, oh, let's... Let's have a bout with some. Oh, uh, you think? Do you, yeah, think, yeah. you honestly think it's a little bit of that? 100%, yeah, because like one, getting back to their roots and yeah, in doing what they're doing. Yeah, they they have a fight just with two large lumps of wood as well. And just show, because they yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. So, Particularly interested me, yeah. and that is why our shield is here, is the the sectional end of it. You can do things that you can't do with a regular pole weapon. Yeah. And one of those things, quite clearly, is it wants to wrap itself around things. It wants to come over the top of a shield. It wants to... Around someone's weapon. Or, or, yeah, or around their back, for instance, yeah. you know, where they might be lesser armoured, or the back of the legs even. Yeah. You know, all those kind of nastiness. So, mm. this is not particularly well mounted, but that, in a way, is slightly deliberate that, that you can pull it. Can you have a quick go at hooking it and seeing if it comes? Yeah, absolutely. 
So if that shield's in front of me and I just want to batter it for some reason, um, yep. then look at this thing. Yeah, well, it's uh, quite easy to hit it quite hard. That connected. <laughs> and what's interesting, because this is articulated, yeah. you don't feel any real shock on the back. Oh, don't you? Because this becomes like a projectile. It's a projectile that's tethered yeah. to a lever. Oh, it's, oh, so, it's so you get... It's almost like an atlatl. It's, you're, you're accelerating this, but at the moment of impact, you can continue your motion with the shaft, and that shock will just be left in that yeah. object. I don't know which... It was sort of up here, wasn't it? I think it hasn't particularly marked it, but oh, there's one. That's a new one. That's not an arrow strike. So it's up there. I mean, I can try and mark it more if you want me to. I can put a bit more welly into it. Give it a go. See what happens. <laughs> well, that definitely hit. <laughs> oh, that's OK. So that's actually the shaft. But oh, I mean, OK. So, see what it does okay, so that's what that's what the marking is here. So we've oh, got. Oh, that's a square hole. Yeah, that... and that one there too. Oh, okay, so I hit quite far yeah. across on it. So that's, yeah, something like that. It's not that the spikes necessarily do a lot to a hard target like this. No. Um, but they bite in, I guess, and you've got quite a lot of energy in the end of this. It's, it's not lead shot or anything. No, I haven't. It's just the iron. Yeah. The iron and... Give it a hook over, and I just want to see how that pulls. I just, yeah. I just got an idea that if you've got it like this it's yeah. well so an interesting thing as well because you've got that articulation even if you hit the top of the shield with the shaft that's going to swing over the top and yeah. either hit the person in the face or hit the arm holding the shield as well yeah so you can actually if there's someone someone's arm behind that shield you can actually do this yes. and hit them in the back of the arm and also i'm guessing that that the stopping of the shaft it's a bit like a trebuchet the yeah. stopping of the shaft will accelerate that around. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. So, you really... Yeah. yeah, well, in fact, look at that. So that very casual swing of mats here, it came over the top and it just removed this big... There's a hole in there ...big chipping. Well. Oh, and another hole here. So an, an arm up there is going to be being hit behind... Absolutely, yeah. I always thought about hitting the head. I didn't think about hitting the shield arm. Yeah. yeah. Next question, You're Matt. Learning. Have I hooked you in the idea of doing a series of films on weirdo weapons? Oh, 100%, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, the next one, I'd yeah. love it if you can just try and, I suppose, get that okay. around there and just see if it wants to bring the I shield down, because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure... sure can, yeah. I'm pretty sure I can do that. Yeah, not but not... Not as much as I would have thought, actually. No. Because when, when you hit there, this, rather than hooking, it just swings very hard mm. there and hits that wood. But I'm sure... Let me experiment a bit more. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is day one, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's making a mess of the wood. Yeah, <laughs> again, yeah. I mean, you can see Matt's first idea about it, you know, mutilating your arm, I think is completely right, because that is utterly landing where your arm is going to be. Yeah. Um, so, and without a doubt. The, an edge of a weapon that was parrying, for example, if someone was putting a, you know, some kind of pole arm or sword in the way, then that's, mm. at the moment of it stopping, that's going to accelerate around and hit what's ever behind it. Yeah. I, I think the next thing is we've got two guys here who are willing to do some sparring with uh, sparring versions that they knocked up, and I think it's just a perfect opportunity for us to just have a look, yeah. see if there's anything more to add to it, and, um, and take it from there. Yeah. But anyway, so far on this, thank you very much, and let's have a look at what they've got. Thank you for um, making this. <laughs> yeah. So we've got Sam, Rob and Richard here, who have been sparring at Fight Camp, and we're going to bring in the two flails now, and we're going to go flail on flail, flail on sword, flail on, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, we'll just have a little bit of play and see what happens, and then um, these guys haven't trained with flail at no, all, good point. so they know what they're doing with long swords, but not necessarily with flails, yeah. although they can apply their knowledge from other weapons to it, and then we'll get some feedback from them maybe and see... Yeah. what they found. All right, brilliant. It did Im immediately bind around, didn't it? Yes. And you can also immediately see the, the, the reach. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> so was a that hit. Was interesting. So that was a parry on the main shaft, yeah. and of course the end swings around. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. And of course the reach advantage is quite big on the flare. Okay, I'm going to have to... Oh. Again. <laughs> And one, okay. Okay, so, so yeah, that's. I mean, that's a tricky exchange, but it's an interesting point that the flail is not edged like a sword is. Yeah. So it's easier to grapple and grab it if you can stop that head moving. Yeah, if you get that first one in. 
Oh. Okay. One thing that occurs to me is I remember um, I used to fence, but I remember whenever I went up against. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> 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 but I remember when I uh, used to go up against the left-hander yeah. because I wasn't used to it. Yeah. It was literally a killer. I yeah, really struggled with that. And I, I think this might be a little bit like that. That if you don't yeah. come across flails every day, you end up with one of the <laughs> <laughs> new trick. You end up with one of these things against you, and you just don't know what to do. And yeah. that thing about like you know, right at the beginning, you got whacked around the side of the head. Yeah. Because he's not expecting it. And had it been a real fight, that would have been a fight under a flail to the side of the head. Yeah. Think, unless you were wearing a helmet. Yeah. Well, even so, I mean, it's quite a whack to get on the side of your head. Yeah. Should we swap them out, get another couple yeah, of guys? Yeah, do, do you want to, uh, yeah, should we change over fighters? Yeah, please. <laughs> so a little bit like sword versus any pole arm, the sword's yeah. trying to make up the distance to come in close enough. So how oh, you see, that, okay. that was on the back of the leg. Yeah, that would have been nasty, although the sword did hit the flail user on the lead arm as well. Oh, mm. smack him. He likes the flail. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, knows yeah, exactly yeah. what to do with the flail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So an interesting thing there, he actually hit him with the shaft rather than the head initially. Yeah. But like I said, the shaft is still mm. a quarter staff almost. You know, it's yeah. a big lump of wood still. So. Well, what it looked like he was doing there was he was keeping it from a distance with yeah. the knuckle. Did you notice there was an uppercut there, a swing from below? Oh, yeah. straight in the head. It seems very easy to snipe with it. We call this sniping, from staying out of distance and just... Oh. Yeah. So going for the, like with all pole arms, for the sword user, going for the lead hand on the pole weapon, because you've got no hand guard, yeah. no protection. It is the flail's day, isn't it? Because it comes in from such weird angles yeah. as well, doesn't it? Oh. Right, okay, shall we, shall we stop there? And yeah. So shall we switch out? Do you want to come back on? Of course. And you get a flail as well this time? Oh, you're giving me playtime. <laughs> Let's go, flail versus flail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Clearly, with with two similar weapons, you're more likely to cancel out, and you're more likely to come in close and come mm. to grappling. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, that 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 would be a disabling blow with a real flag. I mean, what was interesting on the first one, the guy in black and yellow, he didn't even try and back out of the way. Do you think because he was, was not visualising yeah, it coming I, in? I think so, partly. Ooh. So that, that was a classic example of where the parry went in, but it basically just came yeah. around anyway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. And, and that, head. that was also a case of absolutely committed too much there and just left himself wide open. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> leg and head. So in both yeah. cases there, it wasn't possible to defend no. the leg in time, but when the head defence in went in, it mm. came over the top. It's very interesting with this particular weapon, heads seem to get really punished yeah. with it. But that was nice. I mean, you know, he absolutely went in to block it, but yeah. of course, in maybe forgot, further. didn't think, yeah. whatever, it just comes, yeah, yeah, yeah. comes tumbling in. I mean, in. if you could catch just that head, mm. then it would stop it, but yeah. That's what I was attempting, but yeah. I'd just, be, just too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Okay, stop. So it's interesting, so I think a lot of people, because we're used to fighting with non-articulated weapons, when you get the centre line, you're used to occupying that centre line because you've got a point on your weapon, a bit of sword or a halberd mm. or whatever. But with these, you don't have it, they're not very effective thrusting weapons at all. And to hit with them again, yeah. you've got to reload them to yes. swing them again. So uh, it's interesting. Yeah. They kind of wiggled the flails around in the middle there, and neither of them, I mean, except for incidental glancing hits, they weren't going to do it. Yeah, no, I think, I think your point about reloading is quite interesting because yeah. I hadn't considered it like that. Yeah. To, to get the weapon to work properly again, you have to go for a full in swing. It's yeah. not a. So maybe yeah. maybe a more continuous motion is what yeah. you want to do with it. But a bit more like a montant tour. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> well that but what was interesting there, so he did get the first blow on the tummy, but then there was a blow to the face which, oh, would, was which was already in motion. 
So even if, if that had gutted him, that still would have swung down and hit. And it? both guys would have been out. Yeah, but not enough, and he just came straight through and powered through. Yeah. I'm yeah. a big guy, and the block just... Yeah. Matt, this is much more your world in that sense. So tell me what you thought of what you saw there, and then we'll ask the guys. Well, you know, it's always interesting when people pick up an unfamiliar weapon, because you see them trying to adapt what they know to the unfamiliar thing. Um, and uh, there was an evolution through what we were yeah. watching them do. Um, one of the things being that you've got to charge that weapon to, to unload it. You've got to load it to unload it. And um, uh, the positions they were standing in, the distance changed as well. I think they all moved mm. apart a bit. I think initially they were all a bit close uh, and then they realised how far these things can reach. Um, and then the, how do you defend against such a thing? You try, I guess, and either move out of distance or defend the head. And if you try and if you try and block the shaft, then that head will come around and hit yeah. you anyway. And that was the, a major factor. That was. I mean, that, uh, lack of familiarity with it, I think, was evident as well. And I suspect even when you're on a battlefield, you've been facing spear, spear, staff, staff, poleaxe, whatever, and then suddenly this thing comes along, and yeah. you've got to reset your brain about yeah. how to act to it. Hundred percent. And yeah. and, and I think and everything, yeah, yeah, I think that that would change. So, I mean, guys, what did what do you make of it? it start at the end. So, uh, it's horrendous to fight against. Having not done it before, I went into it essentially assuming it'd be slightly like a spear. So the plan was to try and parry it as it comes in to then get inside its circle. But that's not effective. As you said, the other end just comes around and cracks you in the back of the head. Yeah. <laughs> From weird angles that a straight weapon doesn't do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think distance for me, I was thinking my length was here. Yes. And I was, you've got an extra few feet. And then towards yeah. the end of it, I was trying to like snipe with it a bit more. Yeah. But then, yeah, it's a big hit and coming back to guard yourself against something because you do have yeah. to kind of throw it out. Mm. At least yeah. I was doing that, throw it out quite a, quite a way. So, it's yeah. weird because right. in your hand you feel the length of the handle, but not you don't feel so much the and end of the head. I was getting way too close, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were the first guy to get hit. So. Yes, <laughs> I had that dubious honour in itself. Yeah. It's a very interesting thing. I mean, I was blocking, trying to gauge that distance to block the head strike. Now, yeah. when this is a solid weight mass against a sword, I wonder how much damage that would do to a weapon. Yeah. When you actually hit hard with the damn because these things hit like freight trains, your knees are yeah. padded, and I was still going, okay, yeah. that's really clonked me one. Really? And they, they still hit like freight trains. You can imagine a full weight when it's metal, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's just going to start yeah. really denting things. Exactly, and yeah. spiked, yeah, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. One thing me and Tom found in particular, I mean, we were changing the angles, going high, going low. Once you start moving with this, mm. it's not like where you've got a solid weapon where you can manipulate the angle nice and easily there's all that mass momentum still contained yeah. within the top of the weapon here yeah. makes it so much harder you've got to commit with everything everything you do it's going in yeah. it has to go forward your tricks are either on the back end yeah. or you're fainting quick and driving on a new angle yeah. really interesting weapon so tom is the creator and loaner of these wonderful objects um <laughs> work in progress thank you very much but uh yeah how do you find it it's that high low angle like you said it's very much and range you have to kind of stay away from where the head is because any kind of power is no good. Even if you block the head, the head just whips around and strikes you from somewhere else. Mm. And due to the unpredictability of it, I find it's best to kind of stay away, stay away. And then if you can take a big step in, and you kind of just launch it into a quarter and let the head do its thing. You just yeah. throw it wherever, roughly where it needs to go mm. and it'll hit something and it'll bounce around. And that's I how I found you use them. The interesting counterpoint to that though is when I did drive in close to you and you brought the to bring the head back round, yes. I tried to thinking, block yeah now i blocked right on the shaft but what happened is that it came straight back round back of the head and i'm used to fighting a glaive when that would come round that would block it i have the inside track but that's just got it that's not the same different strategy completely required mm. although we didn't see it done uh, many times in these bouts i also noticed that it seemed particularly easy to hit someone in the legs with them as well yes. um, if you get the high guard the first thing yeah. one of the sources shows is a high guard like this as if you're charged for a shot to the head yeah. but you actually drop down and shred the knee yeah. and it's very easy yeah, to do that yeah, yeah. very easy to change targets yeah. mm. I think that's it, guys, really. <laughs> you just got yourself in the back of the head. <laughs> so, so far, you've hit yourself in the back of the head. Matt's drawn blood on his knuckles with this. <laughs> we're doing well. <laughs> yeah, we're doing all right. So, anyway, so uh, thank you very much. So, hopefully, this will be the first of Todd and Matt's weird medieval weapons <laughs> yeah. shown for real. What's um, going to be next? <laughs> I don't know. Well, you tell us what's going to be next, because I know which one I want to do. Okay. So, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, Cheers. thanks. Thank you.